I'm going to run through a kind of quick nuts and bolts summary of what, in general terms, is known as fee assistance offered by some schools to some children in some circumstances. Fee assistance covers scholarships and bursaries awarded to children by schools who offer them places. Other sources of funding are offered by some charitable trusts and other organisations, but the vast majority of funding which goes to help children attend our independent schools is now found and allocated by the schools themselves. So let's clear up some of the most basic questions. What are scholarships and bursaries and the differences between them? Historically, these are rewards for excellence awarded to incoming pupils as an acknowledgement of their exceptional abilities and also as an indication that much is expected of them. In former times, and occasionally still today, old boys would leave legacies to fund scholarships in, for example, their favourite subject, or to support, for example, the children of the clergy or some particular profession, maybe their own profession, people in the services very often, Navy, Air Force, um, or orphans, or some other special category of deserving person. Many scholarships, even today, are still the result of this type of legacy um, or endowment. Some scholarships were, and some still are, worth considerable contributions to the fees. Others were really only for glory. You got your name on a board and enough money to cover your bag of monster munch on the way home. Um, and this is especially true of girls' schools, simply because few of them have been going for all that long, most of them not more than 150 years. And women, for reasons that are only too obvious, would not often have had riches with which to endow schools. Scholarships, of course, still persist. They are an important way for academically selective schools to attract bright pupils who will do them credit in exams and make a strong intellectual contribution to school life. Scholarships are not, as you will know, only offered to academic brain boxes. Schools also offer scholarships in other things that enable the school to shine, for example, in music, in sports, in art, in drama, and these days in IT. There are scholarships around in different places for a whole range of particular talents. In fact, we keep a list of weird and wonderful scholarships offered by individual schools in everything from bagpipe playing to being a girl of exceptionally good character. Um, and you can ask me about some of these if you like at the end. There are also scholarships offered to children of people in particular professions or who live in specific parts of the country. And some of these are very weird and wonderful. My particular favourite is the one for the children of sea fishing families from the former Scottish county of Banff. Anybody here qualify for that one? Thought not. Usually, it's the older, long-established and well-endowed schools who can offer a range of well-funded scholarships to attract talented potential pupils. Newer schools are less likely to have much money to put towards scholarships. Bursaries. In recent years, and this is really the most important thing, I think, there has been a strong move across the whole independent school sector to shift their fee assistance away from scholarships which can so often go to the children of families who can easily afford full fees, to bursaries which are means-tested. So what are bursaries and what does means-testing mean? Your child takes the same academic entrance test as everyone else to gain a place at the school, but both you and the school know that there is no way you could accept a place if offered without a reduction in the fees. It may be that you can afford half the fees, or a quarter, or three quarters, but there's no way you can manage the whole lot, and you tell the school at the outset that that is the position, and it has to be made clear to your child as well. Bursaries are, as I said, means-tested. If you apply for a bursary, you must expect your entire financial and domestic circumstances to be looked at. The school will ask for a full disclosure of your financial situation, this includes your family income, your assets, for example, properties you may own, but also your commitments. They will want to know about your lifestyle. It can sometimes be the case that you can have a surprisingly high family income. 
But if you have inescapable financial commitments, for example, you're responsible for maintaining elderly parents in a care home, you've got several other children, maybe one with particular needs, whatever, or your business is inextricably linked with your family income, you can still often qualify for some fee assistance. But if you take several holidays a year, if you have a yacht, if you keep a horse in expensive stables, have a second home which does not contribute to your, uh, your income via rental, or if you've got a string of rental properties in addition to a double income, you are unlikely to receive much, if any, help. But I suspect if that were true of any of you, you wouldn't be sitting in front of me now. The value of a bursary will be reassessed each year. Now, this can be tricky if you're the sort of person whose income is not regular. You might work on a short-term contract basis or on different projects. Many people's income fluctuates wildly year on year and is unpredictable. If your child is awarded a bursary and in one year you earn more than you did the year before, you must expect the school to reduce your fee assistance. On the other hand, if you hit hard times, and many people who work for themselves or who are on unpredictable short-term contracts often have periods of little or nothing coming in, the school will help if it can, perhaps allowing you to spread your payments or will even up the bursary in a temporary way if there is spare cash in their pot. Schools and some groups of schools, like the Girls' Day School Trust, for example, have for many years had major fundraising initiatives and appeals to build up their reserves of bursary money. Across the whole independent school sector, a third of children, that's over 170,000 children, have some kind of fee reduction in the shape of a scholarship or a bursary. The schools now devote close on £1 billion each year to fee assistance. The value of bursaries awarded is now four times the money given as scholarships. And I think that's really worth your grasping, that there is far more money now available for bursaries than for scholarships. Many of the heads I meet these days are deeply committed to opening the doors of their illustrious schools to talented children whose families could never afford the fees. They have a genuine, sometimes passionately held, social conscience and see it as essential to have as broad as possible a social mix. Some will remind you that most of our most famous and now richest public schools began life as charitable institutions. You should never feel you are going with a begging bowl. Please take that idea home with you. 5,600 pupils are currently on full bursaries. They pay no fees but there are 530,000 pupils at fee-paying independent schools, so only just over 1% of children at independent schools are on 100% bursaries. Please note, of the 165,000 children who do get some kind of fee assistance, the vast majority get a lot less than 100%. Only 2,500 children have some kind of scholarship. It's also worth noting that the trend is toward, to award money to fewer pupils, as I said each year, but to give more help to those on bursaries. In other words, the trend is moving gently towards supporting more children from poorer backgrounds. You're still with me? Well done. There are some academically selective independent schools in London which have up to 10% of their pupils on 100% fee assistance. In other words, they get their entire education at these schools for nothing, plus, in some cases, help with trips and uniform. UCS, University College School, is a good example of that. And some schools, you'll all probably have read about this, St Paul's Boys, for example, has been in the news for this. It will accept applications for fee assistance from families with an income of up to £120,000 per annum. And Godolphin and Latimer, a girls' school close by, will do the same thing. If you know the schools you're interested in, you can look at their websites. Some schools tell you a lot about their fee assistance, others tell you very little. You can call them up, you can go and chat to them. It should always be possible to make an appointment with admissions or with the bursar and talk openly, about, talk openly with them about your child and your circumstances. Some people worry that if they say at the outset that they can't afford full fees, that the school may be prejudiced against them. No. 
The schools need talented children. I've been appalled to hear from several girls' schools in particular over the last two or three years that they did not use their full pot of bursary money as not enough people applied. Two essential points before we start. The crucial thing is to be realistic, both about your child's abilities and about your ability to pay for an independent school. The last thing anybody would want is for your clever child to be offered a place at the school of their dreams, the school of your dreams maybe, and then you have to tell them they can't go there because you can't afford it and the school will give you no help or not enough. Always be absolutely straight with the school, be straight with your child and always have a realistic fallback. If you apply for a bursary, you must, I cannot emphasize this too strongly, you must be scrupulously honest and open about your circumstances. Please, if you take one thing away, let it be that. Because the second last thing you want is for your child to be doing brilliantly at school on a bursary and the school discovers, which it will, that you have not disclosed your true income and your child has to leave through no fault of his own. I've had to help in those circumstances one or two times and it is awful. So don't get yourselves in those circumstances if you possibly can. And a little more brutal reality. Your child may be top of everything in his little state primary and is clearly very able. But you have to bear in mind that he or she will be competing not just for a place at an academically selective school, many of which are highly competitive, but also for financial help against the brightest from many similar schools, but also against children who have been at prep schools which stand or fall by their success in getting places at these schools. Do remember that schools are completely autonomous when it comes to awarding fee assistance. They all have their own criteria. Some are much richer than others. They often have to make hard choices between, for example, awarding 100% bursary to one child, 25% to four children, or 10% off to each of 10 bright and talented children. And what they do one year may be quite different to what they do, did the year before. Unfortunately, nobody is entitled to anything when it comes to financial assistance from independent schools. No school owes you a scholarship or a bursary. And you should always approach the application in a spirit of, let's give it a try. Always make sure you have other options that won't keep you awake at night with worry. Practical point, get your administration right. Make sure you apply in exactly the way the school tells you. All the details should be very clear on their website and don't miss deadlines. The best way of helping your child get to the school that is right for him or her and on a budget that will still enable you to eat and have an annual holiday is to inform yourselves thoroughly on what might be possible and available and then look very realistically at your circumstances and your own child.